morning to you, or whatever time it is at your place. Welcome to Lugano Picos Uniting Online Church on the 6th Sunday of Easter, 17th of May 2020. As I said, this is the 6th Sunday after Easter. But it seems like it has been a long time since Easter. In terms of church calendar, Sundays after Easter continues until Pentecost Sunday, that is on the 31st of May this year. By the way, my name is Irun Kim, the minister of Lugano Picos Uniting Church. And this morning, while I'm leading and preaching in the service, this online service, Lisita will be reading from the Bible and Annette will be praying. Okay, if you worship um, with your family, I mean with your children at home, please feel free to pause and continue this online church video whenever it is necessary. Focus of this week is on God, who is more powerful, more loving, more everything than we can even imagine. During the service, I'm going to ask you to think about some questions, and, and I'll read the storybook. So please tune in to the online church this morning. In today's text, Acts chapter 17, 16 to 31, Paul speaks about the unknown God, who is bigger than anything we can imagine or carve or paint. I would encourage you to ponder the mystery of God, who is more than we can understand. In doing so, I would like to, I, I would like to ask you to pause this online church video for a moment and ponder these questions. What comes into your mind when you think about God? Who is God for you? How do you feel in these four points? Once you take time to ponder these questions, then share your thought with your family or friends who worship with you. Let's do that. Thank you. Uh, you may think and share uh, with your family or friends you know, some different points, but this is what I feel in uh, these four points. God, you are creator. God, you are our father. God, we call you Lord. God, your name is I am who I am. Today, as we worship together, I'm going to light this Christ candle to remember that Christ is with us, among us, in us. Come, let us worship God together by singing the first song, God of Wonders. I'd encourage you to sing this song with your family and friends together. 
However, whether you sing or just listen to, please think about how loving, how powerful God is. Water, earth, and sky. The heavens are your tabernacle. Glory to the Lord on high. God of wonders beyond our galaxy. You are holy.
Amen. Bless you, Lord. You are great, wonderful, holy, righteous. I love that line. Precious Lord, reveal your heart to me. Father, hold me. Hold me. You are holy. Holy. You are holy. So holy. You are holy. Holy. I have a few announcements this morning. And firstly, um, thank you for those people who took part of online church while I was on leave. And especially you know, those people who are leading the service or preaching over the last three Sundays. And secondly, to all LPUC members, I would say I miss you all. I don't name all of you here, but I put your name on the screen. Can you see that? You know, as you see, some of names are bigger than others. You know, not because I do have any favorites, but because there are more people who have the same name as yours. It has been eight weeks since our Sunday worship service was suspended, and it seems quite long time we haven't met each other in person. I hope each of you is safe and coping with these current circumstances reasonably well. If you have any pastoral concerns or prayer support, please contact your pastoral care leader or, or me. And for your information, our Sunday worship service and all other face-to-face -face gatherings are suspended until further notice. Due to, of course, the concern about the safety and well-being of our community. And more details can be found from a notice on gathering uh, from Synod that was sent with this week's worship resource. And thirdly, we are going to organize a virtual morning tea, hopefully from next Sunday via Zoom. So firstly, I'm going to talk with, I mean, discuss with the pastoral care leaders to organize it for you. But if you can access the internet at home or if you have a smartphone, please talk with your pastoral care um, leaders and more information will be given to you, uh, hopefully, uh, this coming, I mean, next week. And lastly, there have been few people who had their birthday over the last couple of weeks. And, for instance, during the last week, there were birthdays for Ellen, Diane, and Grace. So, happy birthday to you, Ellen, Diane, and Grace. And during this week, there was my birthday, it was yesterday. And actually today, there are two people who are having birthday. Cheryl, happy birthday to you. And as well as Arlo. I don't know whether Arlo, you watch this online service with your mom or your nana or pa. Happy birthday to you. I, if I miss your name, but please forgive me. Or probably, you know, you know it, it should be updated in terms of your date of birth. So these are announcements today for you. The reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 17, 
verses 16 to 31. Acts chapter 17, verses 16 to 31. While Paul was waiting for them in Athens, he was greatly distressed to see that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the God-fearing Greeks, as well as in the marketplace, day by day, with those who happened to be there. A group of Ecubrian and Stoic philosophers began to dispute with him. Some of them asked, what is this babbler trying to say? Others remarked, he seemed to be advocating foreign gods. They said that this because Paul was preaching the good news about Jesus and the resurrection. Then they took him and brought him to a meeting of the Arabicus, where they said to him, May we know what this new teaching is that you are pre presenting? You are bringing some strange ideas to our ears and we want to know what they mean. All the Athenians and the foreigners who live there spend their time doing nothing but talking about listening to the latest ideas. Paul then stood up in the meeting of the Arabagus and said, Men of Athens, I see that in every way you are very religious. For as I walked around and looked carefully at your ob objects of worship, I even found an altar with this ins inscription to an unknown God. Now what you worship is something unknown. I'm going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth and does not live in temples built by hands. And he is not served by human hands as if he needed anything because he himself gives all men life and breath and everything else. From one man he made every nation of men, that they should inhabit the world, earth, and he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As some of your own poets have said, we are his offspring. Therefore, since we are God's offspring, we should not think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone. An image made by man's design and skill. In the past God overlooked such ignorance, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, for he has set a day when he will charge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to all men by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the God. In his secondary missionary journey, Paul was in Athens. He was in Athens alone. He thought his only reason for being in Athens was to wait for Silas and Timothy to arrive from Berea where three of them had been. He did exactly what you and I do when we are in a city alone. He became a sightseer. 
It is interesting when you can see and when you can learn about a ch I mean, ch city when you walk along its streets, look at its people and begin to catch something of its spirit. I have been in Athens two and a half years ago without church members as a part of religious tour, so-called fo uh, footsteps of Apostle Paul. In Athens, I was exactly what I just said, you know, being a sightseer and, and just walk around in you know, the city and found significant historical sites. As you know, everywhere in Athens, you can find ancient Greek architectures. As Paul walked around the city of Athens, he was overwhelmed by the number of idols and altars in Athens. The city even had an altar to an unknown god. He was impressed by this and argued with the people in Athens about it. Most of them wondered what this proclaimer would say. They accused him of speaking of other divinities because he spoke of Jesus and the resurrection. They thought that was another foreign god. In fact, we don't have idols or altars like you might have expected to see in Athens. Then what would a modern day Paul see if he walked around our city? What kind of message would he to bring to us? What would he see that would help him understand the things to which we are already committed? Would we see the tall buildings the major industrial and business developments? Would we see the big banks? Would we think he ought to talk about the money and to take some offering? Would we see something non-material and sense the drive for finance success or for social distinction? Would he learn about St. George Illawarra dragons, Cronulla sharks or Canterbury bulldogs or the South Wales Blues or the Sydney Swans, all of these represent something we adore. An idol, according to a dictionary, is an object of passionate devotion. An object of passionate devotion. That simply means that anything or anyone to whom we give passionate devotion can become for us an idol or a god. I would say that there are people in Sydney who might be more passionately devoted to being financially successful than being faithful to God. We would recognize that there are people who might be willing to pay hundreds of dollars for a ticket to see a grand final of any sports game or concert because of their devotion to athletics and uh, celebrities, but who might be reluctant to when you ask them to make a pledge to the church mission and ministry, or who might use almost any excuse for not being in worship. A modern day Paul might say to us, as he did to the people in Athens, as we see in verse 22, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. We have many churches in Sydney. We have beautiful architectures, and we remember Good Friday. We celebrate Easter and Christmas as part of in a church, in a seasonal service and lectionary things. Over 60% of our population indicates you know, as Christians. So what do you think a modern day Paul would see if he walked around our city? What would he say? It might be a sermon like Paul's in Acts. If he is sensitive to himself and to the sermon he wants to preach, but is a sensitive God and to the people, he would acknowledge that God has put in each of our hearts a desire to know God. In every place, in every city, regardless of the external evidence, which might support the contrary, there are also people who have a hope of finding God. The good news is that God is not far from each one of us. For in Him we live and move and have our being. Indeed, 
we are his offspring. Would a modern day Paul then offer God to us rather than using God to beat us over the head? God is not an unknown God. God is not one who lives in temples built by human hands. God is not like gold, silver, or stone, or representation of the art and imagination of human beings. God is a real, personal, knowable God. If you want to know God, you must acknowledge that it is not God who, meets, who needs you, but you need God. See verse 25, he says, Nor is God served by human hands, as though he needs anything, since he himself gives to all life and breath and everything necessary for life. If you want to know God, you can know God only through a genuine desire and honest commitment to know God through prayer, study, worship, and fellowship with others who believe then you can know that the God you seek to know already knows you and has revealed himself to you in Jesus Christ so that you might know God. All other images, all other descriptions and characterizations of God must be examined by this one. For the God we worship is the God of Jesus Christ. What are some of the character, characteristics of God in whom we believe and say you can know? Jesus Christ revealed to us by his life and in his, uh, in his teachings that God is a God of love. God is a God of love. God is a God of compassion who doesn't seek our condemnation because of our immoralities but our salvation from them. God doesn't seek our hurt or desire our hurting. God desires our healing. God doesn't desire our hunger. God desires that we may be filled with the food and, and with the fullness of life. God doesn't desire our alienation. God desires our reconciliation to God and to one another. God doesn't desire our death. God desires that we might have life everlasting. The sacrament of the Lord's Supper is a constant reminder of the extent to which God would extend himself to show how much God loves us and wants us to have life in abundance and forever. Can the idol offer as much or do as much for you? If not, Ought then God be the one who receives your ultimate worship and more of your immediate devotion and commitment? And ought to Jesus Christ be your Lord? Do you want to know God? You can meet God as he comes to you and is present, saying, If with all your heart you truly seek me, you shall surely find me. Then you can say, I know whom I have believed, and I am sure. Today I'm going to finish my message by reading a storybook called In God's Name, written by Sandy Eisenberg Sasso and illustrated by Phoebe Stone. And this story describes how each person, um, each person gives God's name that reflects him or herself. Now hopefully you could claim his name Right. After God created the world, all living things on earth were given a name. The plants and the trees, the animals and the fish, and each person, young and old, had a special name. But no one knew the name of God. So each person searched God for God's name. The farmer, whose skin was dark like the rich brown earth, from which all things grow called God, source of life. The girl, whose skin was as golden as the sun, that, that in the turned night into day called God, creator of light. 
the man who tended the sheep in the valley called the God Shepherd. The artist who carved the figures from the earth as a hard stone called God My Rock. Sometimes the people who called God by different names were puzzled. They said, every living thing has a single name. The marigold, pansy and lily, the oak tree and pine. God must have a single name that is greater and more wonderful than all other names. Each person thought his name for God was the greatest. Each person thought her name for God was the very best. The farmer, girl, shepherd, and artist believed they, uh, they each had the perfect name for God, but no one listened. Least of all, God. And so each person kept searching for God's name. Women who, who cared for the sick called God Hila. The slave who was freed from bondage called God Redeemer. Grandma who was bent with age and sorrow called God Comforter. The young man who held the hand of his baby daughter called God Father. All the people called God by different names. They tried to tell one another that their name was the best, the only name for God, and that all other names were wrong. But no one listened, least of all God. And so each person kept searching for God's name. Then one day, all the people who called God by a different name came together. They knelt by a lake that was clear and quite like mirror, God's mirror. Then they looked into God's mirror and saw their own faces and the faces of all the others. And they called out their names for God, source of life, creator of light, shepherd, my role, killer, redeemer, comforter, father, all at the same time. At the moment, the people knew that all the names for God were good, and no name was better than another. Then all at once their voices came together and they called God one. Everyone listened. Most of all, God. How do you find this story? So now what do you name God? Who is God for you? Hope you know more about God and you can name him right. Now Annette is going to lead us praise. We come now to our time of prayers for others and I want to begin with a reflection on who God is. Please pray with me. God you are creator. Protect your whole world. Be with us as we care for plants and animals and the whole earth. God, you are our father and our mother. Care for and be with people who are sick with corona and other diseases. Comfort those who are sad about friends and family who have died. Guide scientists trying to find ways to cure this virus and help all of us know how best to take care of each other. God, we call you Lord. Help us know what you want us to do and give us the courage to do it. Guide our leaders as they make hard decisions about reopening in response to the virus that has not gone away. God, your name is I am who I am. You are more than we will ever understand completely. You are awesome and holy. We honour you and we want to give you our best. 
And Heavenly Father, we thank you that uh, you are with us and we thank you for your presence with us here today. Thank you that in all circumstances, whether it be in the joys of life or in the struggles that we are experiencing now, Lord, even though we cannot meet together in person, we remain committed to you. Help us live according to your spirit. Give us hearts and minds to meditate on you and your word. And we give thanks that there have been fewer cases of COVID-19 over this past week, allowing for an easing of some restrictions. We pray too for all healthcare workers and pray that you will keep them safe. We pray for our Prime Minister, our Minister for Health, our Chief Medical Officer, the National Cabinet, for our Premier and all those at state level whose workload has been tremendous over recent months. Give them wisdom as they make vital decisions, that they will be guided to make plans based on truth and love. Bless them with good health and strength to endure in the days ahead. And Lord, we continue to uphold Samote and all those on board the Adelaide. We thank you for your protection and safety on all personnel during their training. We pray that Samote has had opportunities to share your love and grace to all those he has been in contact with. And we give thanks that they will return to Sydney tomorrow. Thank you for your presence with Melee and Josiah, William, Marianne and Lafitu while Samote has been away. And we give thanks for the blessing this family is to our church community. Father, we also give thanks for Ilong's time of leave. Though not as had been planned, we pray that he has had a time of refreshment and relaxation. We also want to give thanks for Natalie as she continues to keep in contact with mainly music messy church and Sunday school families. Thank you that she is keeping on building relationships with them. And we too want to continue to uphold Richard in his work as Presbytery Chairman and as our Treasurer. There has been a lot to do during this time, so we pray your blessing upon him and also for Greg as he's been able to assist Richard. Lord, we continue to pray for the Fiegel family as they have welcomed little Ethan into their midst. And Father, he's just a tiny little boy, so we are asking that he will continue to put on weight and gain strength each day. Bless them, Lord. And for those in need of a special touch from you at this time, we think of Joan in rehab at Calvary, for Paul now home from hospital, for Bob Wyndham in hospital after a fall, for Rick, a paramedic and, and friend of Alan's, for continued healing and a full recovery from COVID-19. For Elizabeth, as she continues with treatment, and for the Reverend Laurie Fitz, Fitzgerald, now recuperating at home. Lord, you know the needs of these, of your children, and we ask that you will bless them with your presence, your healing, and minister to them according to their needs. We also pray for Dean and his carer, Philip, at this time when we cannot meet together, that they will be aware of your presence with them. We thank you that you have heard our prayers today, and we ask that you will answer in your time and in the way that is best for us. Please join me now with saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
This is an end of today's online church. However, if you are willing to get connected with us or simply having any questions or inquiry, please contact me via email on screen or uh, uh, via a uh, phone number on the screen. I guess that our online church is one of ways to get connected with our families and our friends. So why don't you encourage them to watch you know, this online church and talk about you know, something, you know, something about faith and God or, or, or Jesus Christ or Christian journey with them later. Now as we conclude the service, we may say to each other, go in peace. God loves you and I love you. This may be done by going around the circle or with each member of the family saying it to every other member of the family. So I said, go in peace. God loves you and I love you. Um, if you are you know, alone to watch this online church, then you may say yourself, you know, go in peace. God loves me and I love you, God. Hope you have a very blessed day and week. See you next week. I got no worries, got no woes, feeling happy, that's me.